and welcome to Outside Xbox. I'm Jane and you're watching Show of the Week. If you're watching it just after it went live, then happy weekend. And if you're watching it in the future, in part of a Netflix-style binge of every episode of this old YouTube classic ever made, then happy future. How's that robot body working out for you? All right. Also, I'm Andy. This week, I took up the mantle of Victorian London's greatest detective. Can you just hold still a sec? I will... There we go, thank you. Shot him in the ear. Right in the ear. I don't remember Sherlock being such a murderer. No, it's definitely in the books. Look. That's in pen. Still counts. <laughs> so anyway, what did you do this week? Oh, you know, looting, pacifying crowds, bit of firearms training. Oh yeah, the division's out, isn't it? The division's out. Yes, Jane, it is. And while here in the real world, civilization rumbles on, more or less, in the world of The Division, it's gone wronger than me doing hard maths. Slow down a little more about the first wave. They're all either dead or MIA. So this is up to us. That's why we need to get it together. So this is a story all about how New York got flipped turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how Manhattan is now ruined thanks to germ warfare. Welcome to Hudson Piers. I'm not sure what you're looking to get out of this. Everything behind this gate is a goddamn war zone. So, yes, some joker went and created a nationwide smallpox epidemic which killed many people and turned many still other people into desperate looters, violent thugs, and maniacal cleaners. Oh, he's a purple. Threat's he's foul. a purple. Oh. Shooting him in his purple Ow, back. Right behind okay. me. <laughs> oh, if you guys love fire so much, why don't you just marry it? You're an agent for the Strategic Homeland Division, or The Division, to its friends, and your job in the mid-apocalypse is to save what remains. This is achieved mostly by shooting things in a multiplayer open-world New York City, developing your character skills as you level up, teaming with other agents, and scavenging better and better loot from the ashes of Manhattan like the human cockroach you are. Alright, green loot. I'm having it. Utility vest. Oh wait, I've already got one of those. You'll be plenty busy with the story-led missions about upgrading your base of operations, and with the extremely treacherous player versus player Dark Zone, on which more later. But what's more, there are two imminent updates coming to The Division in April and May. The April update will add the game's first incursion, described as a challenging endgame activity. In it, squads square off against super tough baddies to win elite guns and equipment. This is where you'll find the very fanciest hats in The Division, if you're on the lookout for a gold-plated pom-pom beanie. The same update brings loot trading, aka the feature for which everyone has been asking. Finally, players in the same co-op group will be able to trade loot picked up during a co-op session. So you can have a fancy hat off mic, if you can persuade him to trade. The second free update, which arrives in May, will refresh the Dark Zone and bring another of those incursions, this time set in Columbus Circle, which appears to be a giant roundabout. It's a big circular road, which is a roundabout way of saying it's a roundabout. We've all got roundabouts, New York. Stop showing off. You know we have these all over the place in the UK. We should try going to Milton Keynes. So how have you been getting on in the division then? Super well, thanks for asking. I am the master of the Dark Zone. Really? Have you got any tips then? Sure do, Jane. Tip one, if you're doing jumping jacks, people might take pity on you and leave you alone. Try crying into your headset microphone as well. Try to really sell it. <laughs> no, sorry, these tips are rubbish. You don't know anything about the Dark Zone. Yeah, you're right, but I know someone who does. Who's that then? Hey guys, my name's Arex from the Arex Gaming YouTube channel, where I cover a wide range of games from Destiny all the way to the likes of Monster Hunter, and more importantly for this episode, The Division. Walkthroughs, guides, hints and tips, the latest news, whatever it is, I got you covered. And today, I'm going to help you survive the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone is The Division's risky PvE area, where alongside the AI enemies, you'll also encounter other players. Other players who can shoot you on sight and take your Dark Zone loot. It's a pretty hostile environment, but it's also where you're going to find some of the best loot in the game. So here are five handy tips that'll help you survive what lies ahead. When you venture into the dark zone and you find that sweet loot that you really don't want to lose, let's be honest it's going to be a pom pom beanie, then having your friends to cover you, heal you and get you up if you go down will always come in handy. And if you don't have a pre-made group of friends, don't worry. You can bring up the map and head over to the matchmaking tab or you can head over to one of the safe houses and call in some help from here. Either way, there is always backup if you need it. One of the great things about The Division is that you are never bound by your choices. You can swap out your skills and talents as often as you like, and adapt to whatever situation you're in. But that also means that you never really know what you're up against when facing other players. Or do you? See, if you look at a player's go bag, you will see that it has a load of different items attached. And these aren't just for decoration. 
Each item you see here represents a skill, and with a keen eye, that means you can go into a fight knowing what you're up against. To give you a few examples, this is a sentry turret, this is a pulse, and this is a sticky bomb. Of course, there are a lot more skills to discover, but if you learn what they look like, it might just influence your decision when engaging other players. It is very easy to just bring up the map, set a waypoint and follow the GPS blindly until you reach your destination. But good knowledge of the map means that you can reach your destination much quicker and also if you're being chased through the dark zone it might just be the difference between getting caught and getting away. See the in-game GPS will take you down the most direct route using main streets. What it won't do is take into account back alleys, ladders, ropes or underground car parks. What's more, in the Dark Zone, you'll also be competing with other players to take out enemy AI mobs first, or loot Dark Zone chests for cash and items. So being able to run around the map from point to point as efficiently as possible is again going to give you the one-up on your opponents. Having the right gear to support the way you play is super important. Armor pieces in the Division carry attribute values, and these attribute values determine the type of agent you are. Firearms will boost weapon damage, Stamina will boost your health, and Electronics will boost skill power. So if you want to be the Glass Cannon, seek out gear with firearms. If you want to be the Tank, Stamina is your friend. And if you want to make the most of your skills and dish out some serious damage, Electronics is the way forward. And on top of that, it's about finding the weapons that work for you. The Dark Zone has checkpoints, each of which has a vendor. Buying items from these vendors is a safe way to gear up as it doesn't require extraction. And while some of the best items will still have to be extracted, this is at least a way to get ready for the fight ahead. While the Dark Zone is a PvP area, attacking other players has its consequences. People can kill you without the associated penalty. Dying as a rogue agent also means you lose items. In fact, dying in the Dark Zone regardless will see you lose items, keys and cash, but as a neutral player the amount is negligible. As a rogue player on the other hand, what you lose can be pretty substantial. In the Division, you have a player level and a Dark Zone rank. Your player level is fixed, but your Dark Zone rank isn't, and can go both up and down. Dying in the Dark Zone will see you lose some Dark Zone XP, Dark Zone funds, any contaminated loot that you have yet to extract, and finally, some Dark Zone keys. And while cash and XP is easy to come by, loot and keys are precious. So if you're going to go and pick a fight with someone, think about what you're carrying, because the fight won't always go your way. But of course, if all else fails, as Mike said, you can always try crying and doing jumping jacks. Now it's time to see what's written in the comments and on the blackboards in Quantum Break. I mean, I like Talon Wake too, but jeez. First up, your comments on video game non-swimmers whose worst enemy is water. As we see here, when Altair gets dunked in water, he flails like a man being attacked by bees, then drowns immediately. Commenter Skaraki14 has this request for game developers. Water OP, please nerf. Commenter Anarchy Infamous, on the other hand, has an explanation for Altair's aquaphobia. It actually says in the manual for AC1 that the water in the Animus is glitchy. Oh, so it's an Animus glitch, like those people's faces in Assassin's Creed Unity. Right, whenever you see something like that in an Assassin's Creed game, it's an Animus glitch. And on the subject of John Marston breathing through his hat, Redstone Casey says, Of course John Marston breathes through his hat. There's 10 gallons of air inside. It's like a cowboy diving bell. He'll be like that for hours. Moving on, here are the comments on this Fallout 4 quiz in which Jane tested our knowledge of various companions' nudity tolerances. Who's the nakedest companion? Probably Strong. You now, Strong's leader. Because he's, I mean, he's got a loincloth. Uh, so he's basically naked, so he might be like, yeah, good, just a couple of naked bros roaming around the wasteland. Commenter Pidgey Howler would like to point out, actually Hancock likes nudity. XX88 doesn't like it though. He was not pleased when I took off my clothes for like a minute. You'd be surprised how many people are like that. And in Fallout 4 as well. There it is. The shield heli carrier comes in and flies over, and then you spend half an hour trying to fire Fat Man nukes at it to see if you can get it to hit the shield heli carrier, but you can't. Another word for the shield hel heli carrier? The Brotherhood of Steel murder blimp. Teleporting X-Man and commenter Nightcrawler bamps in to say, Dear Bethesda, please adopt the name Brotherhood of Steel murder blimp for the next game, TY. Hey, they do change stuff, so it could happen, as Tomas Magarson points out. After the massive sweet roll thefts in Skyrim, Bethesda lowered the thefts by making them literal shit in Fallout. Your sweet rolls are finally safe. 
That's a good tactic, actually, Mike. That's why I stole your Danish earlier and stamped on it so no one would steal it. Thanks. You're welcome. Lastly this week, your comments on last week's show about Dark Souls 3 and the unfair video games that wanted us to suffer. I was playing Dark Souls 3. I mean, my weapon never disappeared, but I did get flattened with a basket full of rocks, hugged to death by a portly wizard, and sat on by a giant tree. And believe it or not, that's a pretty average half an hour in Dark Souls land. Commenter Max West would like to point out, it seems all Xbox videos about Dark Souls involve Mike suffering. To which Foxfire Inferno replies, I think you can remove about Dark Souls from that statement. I was looking forward to that, Danish. Purefold NZ drops by to let us know that British people, you can't tell if they're being sarcastic or serious because it sounds the same. Excellent comment, Purefold NZ. Really great. Are you being sarcastic? Finally this week, and also on the subject of Dark Souls, Jackie Stevenson says, I love how Dark Souls puts you died in big red letters at the centre of the screen after you die. Thanks, Dark Souls. I couldn't tell that I died from how my health bar is at zero, my character is face down on the ground and is not getting up anytime soon, and how I'm currently debating bashing the developers over the head with my computer. I really needed that reminder. Mm, they should have gone with my suggestion, which was that You Are Dead song from Total Distortion. Thought you were hot. Guess what? You're not. You are dead, dead, dead. You brought your whole adventure to a screeching halt. Much better. All right, I'm off back to the studio. Catch you later. I'll be playing Dark Souls. Yeah, this is much worse. That's it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. But unlike the infected paper money in the division, the YouTube like button has no physical form, and therefore you will 100% not catch a plague from touching it. That's an outside Xbox guarantee. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Press the like button, is what I'm saying, please. All right, want to go for lunch? Um, no, you go ahead. I've just gone to the bit where Holmes. Steals a piece of Eden and then derails a train into like 40 Templars. That is a good bit, yeah.